All the way to the pillar. Right there. All the way to the pillar and then all the way to that uh, speaker right there. Okay. That's your yeah, I just want to know what the cutoff point is. Am I unmuted now? Yeah. yeah you're all right, all right. So, hello everyone. Hello. My name is Marco Rivera. I am actually majoring here at UTEP. I'm majoring under communication studies, and my minor is actually under leadership studies. So, today, put a presentation for you guys. But I know the presentations are boring, so I'll try. <laughs> I'll try and make this as painless as possible, okay? But I put this together because I feel like a lot of people don't understand the importance of what communication is, how effective it can be. And when we learn to be an effective communicator, you're gonna be more successful in life in general. That goes for you guys that are here and those who are listening um, online as well. So this is a very short presentation, but you're gonna hear me more talk than just from looking at the PowerPoint, right? So. Let's go to the first slide. So I wanted to start off asking one question is, why is communication important to you guys or to the ones that are online? What do you think? I'm leaving it open to anyone to get their opinions or whatever they might think. What do you, why do you think it's important or why don't you think it's important? Doesn't matter. Yes. So we can understand how we each feel. Yes. That's actually one of the important things that I have learned as, you know, reading all these textbooks that I don't want to read. But yes, that's one of the things that I have encountered is yes, it helps us build relationships. That's one of them. Now, can any of you think of another one? Go for it, man. Gets us out of those interpreted uh, habits. Yes. I want to tell you a quick little story. Me, I was very shy when I was little, which means I didn't talk to no one. And people thought I was deaf or mute. <laughs> okay that's what they literally thought because i wouldn't talk to anyone but it was because i was an introvert i didn't like talking to people because i was like why do people want to know how i feel you know but yes but there's a lot more to communication that just meets the eye than just building relationships or getting from being away from being an introvert so some of the common misconceptions about communication is that um, is communication does not change whether you are talking with a team, a person, family, friends, or individuals. I'm going to put you a little example. Would you talk the same way you talk to your parents? The same way you talk to your parents, would you talk with your friends? No, you wouldn't. You would actually change. Because, you know, I mean, we're obviously talking slang terms or whatever it might be. And it's just going to go up to your mom and be like, hey, what's you know, what's up, man? You're not going to do that, man, right? You're not going to do that. So that's one of the common misconceptions. You tailor your communication according to the people that are around you. And ultimately, sometimes we change our ideals, our values, or even our beliefs as well. But some people think that when you get up in a presentation stage, that people know that you're nervous. You're like, oh, people know that I'm sweating right now. But it's actually a very common misconception. Actually, people don't know that. Now, if you start shaking, <laughs> you start jeering like that, of course, people are going to notice. But communication, in reality, when you become like more accustomed to it, you're not even going to feel the nerves as well. Now, me personally, now when I get up and I do presentations, I'm like, okay, let's do it. It doesn't matter to me anymore. But... There was a point where I thought, oh, they, they know, man. They know that, I, that I'm nervous. They know that, but they don't. It's actually a very common misconception. Also, many people think that communication is not important. It's kind of dumb because whether you go to work, to a job you hate, or you go to school, or you go anywhere, there's communication all around you. And second is... Uh, very common misconception is that you can fake it until you make it, which means you can talk about, you can perceive others and tell them, oh, I know what I'm talking about. But 
when you do that, people can actually find out little things about you. So what you want to do is becoming an effective communicator is more about practice and just going at it over and over again until you become accustomed to it. So we're going to move on to actually on why communication is very important. Well, communication is not only just part of our daily lives, but it helps us build relationships. It allows us to share our experiences, our needs, and helps us connect with others. Because I don't know if you've seen that movie, it's called The Notebook, okay? The only reason I saw it was because my dad would have stopped looking at it. But there's a scene where this chick says, the guy says to the chick, he's like, what do you want? He's like, I don't know. If you don't tell me what you want, then how can I tailor myself to you? How am I going to help you? You can't. You can't just be quiet and not say anything because it's not going to work. But also, communication is everywhere around us. It's in everywhere you look. But communication is not just talking. If I stand here and say nothing, that's communication. If I move my hands up, that's communication. If I throw gang signs, that's communication. <laughs> Everything that you see is communication. Everything around you. But most important, how important is it that we express ourselves? Because how are people going to get to know us if we don't know how to communicate properly? It's impossible. But there's, also, there's various forms of communication. As we see up there in that graphic, we see that there's verbal, there's nonverbal, there's visual, and there's also written. Personally, I'm not that good at expressing my emotions when it comes to writing because I suck at grammar. <laughs> I do not know where to put a period. I don't know how to do this and that. But I'm very good at expressing my emotions when it comes to verbal, nonverbal, and visual. It's just something that I became accustomed to. And little by little, I'm becoming more effective when it comes to writing as well. So, yeah, I mean... Everything is basically straightforward, but even when we look at all these things, it, it connects to all of us, right? I mean, communication is everywhere around us. It goes to our day-to-day -day lives. It helps us express each other. It helps us share our emotions through it. That's very important, right? Because say you have a girlfriend or you have a boyfriend, then how are you going to tell them what you want? If you just stay quiet or nothing? <laughs> no, man, you got you to talk to them. But that's the only way. All right, so <clears throat> how can we become more effective when communicating? Now, pretend you didn't see the slide. <laughs> no, just kidding. What do you guys think? Uh, practice. Sheesh, man. Yeah, you get you know, it's right on point right there. You got it. <laughs> no, just saying. Yes, practice. Have confidence in yourself. Have very good confidence in yourself. Because if you come up here, you start sweating, and then you're going to be like, oh, people are looking at me funny. You're going to be like, oh, <laughs> you're going to fail. But if you identify your objectives, which is what do you hope to accomplish, either immediately or long term? Have a goal of where you're getting to. Don't just go in there without a plan. No, no, no. Even Mike Tyson said a very famous thing. He said, when it comes to outside of living, I'm scared because I'm terrified. But when it comes inside of the ring, I'm confident. Why? Because he knew what his domain was. He was confident in himself. And also a very important one is body language. Because if you just stand up here and you're like, okay, guys, okay, so if you're going to be like all shy, then people are going to know that. So you have to assert you kind of like your dumbest, but you have to assert that you know what you're talking about. And so when it comes to communicating, like, talk about things that, that you enjoy. I don't know about you guys, but I like anime. I don't know if you guys like anime. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's pretty cool. Also, know your audience. Because when you know the demographic of your audience, it's going to be way more easier for you to connect with one each other. Because if you don't know who you're going in there with, it's going to be kind of hard. It's not impossible, but it is doable. But when you know your audience, when you know how they react, how they don't react, whether you tell a joke and they don't laugh, right? That can be kind of awkward because if you tell a joke and everybody stays quiet, you don't be like, oh man, what do I do now? 
So you have to know how to tailor yourself to those people because you're not going to reach everyone. And that's totally fine. But as long as you're confident in yourself and you know where you're going to get, you're going to be a more effective communicator right off the bat. I heard that you were an introvert, right? You say you're an introvert. I was the same age. Or people are introverts, right? But when we talk about introverts, it's just that more they got to have confidence in who they, who they are themselves, right? And when you have more confidence in yourself, ultimately, you break out of that boat, like me. So in that being said, what are some other things you think you could add? Because honestly, this, I just made it up like, like last night. I, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but, but what are some of the things that you think you can add to your own personal, you know, belief systems or whatever it might be to become an effective communicator. What do you guys think? Anyone? Talk more. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna learn anything if you don't if you don't talk. Yeah, you, know? you gotta talk. <laughs> well, yeah. So, one of the things that we is very common in the communication field is actually the seven C's of communication. And this is kind of like a demographic of what it is. It's courtesy, concrete, consideration, conscience, correct, complete, and clarity. When you fulfill all of this, you actually fulfill the role of being an effective communicator. Because if your message is clear, then you'll be able to reach more people, right? When you're complete and your information is not like chopped up, then obviously, you're gonna become more effective. And when you become concrete, you're courteous about others, you respect them for who they are, even if they don't respect you, which is a big one. Because sometimes when you communicate with other people, people have opinions. But the thing is, is that you have to be <clears throat> respectful for who they are and what they believe. When you do that, they're gonna sit down and listen. But if you're coming up here and you're just gonna go at them <laughs> right off the bat, ah, man, this ain't a comedy show. <laughs> you know, I've seen those comedy shows where they're like up there and they're like, and there's some heckler on the back and always says something, right? But when you're courteous to others, it does wonders for you. Okay. So, with that being said, what are, have you guys seen The Office? No? The, damn, sheesh, man. I thought you guys saw The Office, man. Anybody seen The Office? Just the memes? I mean, that's good. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it's a meme just tells you. But Michael is actually the boss of the officer. But he does a lot of things that you're not supposed to do when communicating with others. Okay? So that's a good example of what not to do. But communication is so, so important that I can't even put a value on it. Because people think that communication is not important. But if communication was not important, then every single major would be useless because you couldn't communicate with that other person. If you're an engineer and you're talking to an engineer, what are you doing? You're communicating with them. But if you don't have communication, then how are you going to talk to them? Just going to be like, so let's, <laughs> it's not going to work. So, all in all, basically, if you want to become an effective communicator, practice, 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 practice. When you practice, you will become an effective communicator. Because even me, it took me a long time, a long, long time to break out of my shell. Because people put basically that label on me that they thought, oh, this guy can't talk. I know he can. But it wasn't until one day I went up and I gave a presentation. And let me tell you something, everybody started clapping, man. And I was like, holy moly. I was like, maybe I got a knack for this. But I was nervous as hell up there. I was sweating, like really bad. But when I went up there, something flicked in my head. And I was like, you know what? This ain't that hard. But when you communicate better, you can get away with so many things. Okay? So many things. I'm not going to tell you what you can get away with. But... When you know how to converse with people, man, people are just going to, the conversations are just going to flow and you're not even going to be like, it's not going to be awkward for you. So 
That being said, this is actually the end of my presentation. It wasn't that long. But I think of communication more as an art form. So it's like you're building a masterpiece. And in the beginning, you know, it might not look at, like much. And people are like, what are you drawing, man? I don't know what you're drawing. But in the end, once you put those little details and you start painting and you start going into it over and over and over again, it becomes a masterpiece little by little. And that's all it is. So that being said, you guys got any questions for me? Like, uh, what's the next week you practice? The, the base way? The best way to build confidence? So what I found is, um, you know, when I'm practicing for like a PowerPoint or something, I usually go with the people that I know the most, families or friends, right? Because I'm more comfortable in speaking with them. So I practice on that. That's the way I kind of build confidence because I'm like, if they tell me to change a little things, okay, I'm okay. Then after that, sometimes what I do is I go up to a complete stranger and I'm like, hey man, uh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this PowerPoint, man. I uh, just need like some quick tips, some classmates that I haven't even talked to. I go up to them and I'm like, hey man, like, uh, can I like present this to you? And they're like, yeah. Well, it's more about when it comes to confidence. I think we're just afraid of talking to people that we don't know, right? Based on what I know right here, I all, I mean, I see you right in the office, right? I talked to you a couple of times, but most of you, I don't really know in a personal way, right? So in that being said, like confidence is built upon practice in anything you do. You, does that kind of like answer your question? Yeah, you sure? Be positive. Positive. Are you sure? Yeah. If you're not positive, you know what I'm saying? Anybody else? You know, anybody, any kind of question? Yeah. Um, do you see any difference in public speaking and presenting for five, ten people as opposed to 500 people? Like, does it, does it affect your nerves a little bit more, a little bit less? Is it <clears throat> easier to talk to more people or is it easier to talk to smaller groups? So, Obviously, it's going to be easier to talk to smaller groups, right? Actually, tomorrow, I'm presenting in front of the president of UTEP and all the deans. Yeah. No pressure. No, no pressure, pressure, right? But it's like I said, Mike Tyson said, outside of the ring, he's scared. But when you're inside of it, you start going with the flow. It is harder to present with more people there because you have all these eyes looking at you. And you're like, you know what? They're just looking at me to see what I want to mess up. But if you think that way, you're going to mess up. <laughs> it's all about knowing yourself and knowing what you like, knowing what you're presenting. Because if you don't know it at the end of the day, you're going to mess up because you, you didn't practice. You can't just go up there and wing it. Even though I do that sometimes. I'm like, oh, I, do. <laughs> I do that sometimes, but... Yes, it does get nerve wracking when there's more people, but that's why you kind of start like in small groups. Once you start in small groups, you go into larger and larger settings. I've done, I believe it was like, I've done like three presentations where there's been more than like 20 people in there. But tomorrow, that's a whole different ballgame because well, the president of YouTube, <laughs> you know, like that relies on me, you know, and it's not easy. It's not easy going up here and presenting. I know. I know it's not. But you just got to find like what you're good at. Like present something that you know, that you're formal and knowledgeable about and practice every day, every day, every day. Because if you don't, man, yeah, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna chew you up of there, man. <laughs> They're going to chew you up. <laughs> so you got you to gotta be good at what you're saying. But yeah, so this this for me is kind of like practice for the other presentation I'm gonna have tomorrow. Because tomorrow I gotta bring a suit, man. I'm gonna do all of this, and I'm like, eh, man, I don't want to do that, right? But I know that if I hit this one out of ballpark, who knows, right? Seize the moment. Always when I'm presenting, whether it's a big crowd or a small crowd, what you see is what you get. 
which means I'm always going to think that there's more people in the room because in reality, I want to make this as fun as possible. I don't want to be one of those teachers, right? And they're like, they get up here and they're like, <laughs> right? They're like, like flicking with the, with the little clicker up there. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> so, like, yeah, like he even had a history teacher. Oh, man, that was the boringest class I've ever been in. Because he would stand up there and he would just be like, and he had the like most soothing voice. So I would like fall asleep in there. But that's one thing I was like, I never want to be like that. Because if I'm like that, I know that I'm not getting my message through effectively. So, yeah. Any more questions, you guys? Any? Yeah. Any questions? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you get nervous, man. You can't get nervous. Actually, I was going to go Yeah, actually, one of the things I was going to put in this is that now what most people are looking at when it comes to resumes is actually someone who can lead people. Because if you can't, if you can't be a leader of people, yeah, they're most likely going to like pass you up. But when they see that you're a, you're a good communicator with someone, like you have no idea. Like even like salespeople, like say you can convince someone to buy a car every day, man, you're going to be a vital asset. Or say you know different languages and you know how to speak to people, you're going to be so much more vital. And they're going to choose you over that person who might have more years of school or whatever it might be because you know how to talk. And that's amazing, man, because, I mean, think about it. I don't know math. Jeez, man, I was never good at math. That's why, that's why I didn't go to the route of taking engineering because I was like, man, it's not for me. But it's building up that confidence. But if you know how to talk, man, even just talk to random people. That's what I do. Because in my, in my club, I have to approach people, tell them, hey, man, you wanna, you, are you interested in joining our club that we have here on YouTube? Right? I go up to them. I go up to random people. And they're like, usually, some of them get scared. I don't know why. But they get scared. But most of them, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah. And you just know how to like converse with people and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's very, very vital. But I guarantee you, man, if you put in the practice, you put in the work, you're not going to regret it. And you, you're going to get you in Western tank. You never know. You might soar up up there. Man. So, yeah. But yes, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you to the people who are on Zoom that I can't see. I don't know your faces, but yeah, thank you. But yes, my name is Marco Rivera.